Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. September 10th, 2024. Let's get into it. Now, on a, I want to start on a positive thing here. I always talk about all this negativity and everything. I want to try something, and I'll let you guys know how this turns out. I was watching Redacted yesterday, and uh, they were doing an episode on... Uh, well, they're, they're going to be talking about 9-11 all week long. And I, they call them conspiracy theories, but, uh, you know, they're presenting it more as fact at this point, And I tend to agree with them. And the guy on yesterday was going on about uh, how there's no way that those planes were flown by the hijackers, that they were, they were probably on, or most definitely on autopilot, because no pilot could make the maneuvers or fly those planes with a minimal amount of training uh, so accurately into the World Trade Center's uh, questionable whether there was a plane that actually hit the Pentagon or whether that was a cruise missile and uh, and then of course the if it was the plane that they said that the maneuver that plane would have had to make and that did not you know to come right in on the Pentagon anyway you can watch that episode I encourage you to watch redacted all week long but on there they had a, a, a segment with the guy it's uh, blackforestsupplements.com blackforestsupplements.com uh, slash redacted if you want to check them out and uh, they were talking about this NHM supplement, and so I. Th in, it, but it's a it's a supplement that's supposed to help with uh, cell regeneration, and uh, that's something that I desperately need. By the way, I'm walking the dog <laughs> at the same time, so I got to let him do his thing. Uh, that's a supplement that I thought. Well, you know, I've gotten a lot of neuropathy from breaking my neck, so I'm going to give it a try, and uh, and see if it works. Now it ain't cheap. It ain't cheap. Uh, I, it's $99 a bottle, and you think, oh my God, <laughs> I mean, that's insane. But what they're offering right now, it's a good deal. It's uh, two for one. And uh, I mean, uh, buy two, get two free. So you're out 200 bucks to buy two of them, but you're getting two free, so that's four bottles. I, I'm assuming you just take one pill a day, so that'll be a long time. And I'm going to see if it helps with my neuropathy, and I'll get back to you. Now, if you want to learn about NHM supplements. Just go to YouTube and just type in NH NH NHN or NMN. Egg on it. Let me uh, let me take a look at my notes here. Hold on. Yeah, NMN <laughs> supplement, and it'll, you'll pull up about a gazillion videos. And I, I sat there and watched some of those to learn about what it is. Uh, the next story was, and this is something I just don't understand was there's 20,000 Haitians that got dropped off up in Ohio. You've probably been hearing all about it. Uh, I guess they're eating all the cats and dogs. <laughs> People are coming up in arms. But that's not the point of reason that I'm talking about this on the video. I want to understand what's the governor of Ohio doing? Okay, you've got, by the way, there's supposed to be tents in people's yards. I mean, it's a takeover of the entire town of Springfield, Ohio. I mean, why are, why is the governor, I, mean, I would send in the National Guard and do, or at least do what DeSantis did, uh, grab the Haitians, because it's supposed to be, in Ohio or Republican state, am I wrong in that regard? I mean, if it's a Democrat state, I completely understand it. You know, they hate their people. Democrats hate everybody, including their own. But, uh, especially blacks. Black, Democrats hate black people. But anyway, so I don't understand why... Uh, the governor just doesn't grab those Haitians out of the town and ship them to New York or ship them to California, you know, or any Democrat state. Go to ship them to Colorado. Why are you letting them uh, 20,000 people run rampant just because the, the federal government uh, dropped them off in Ohio? You know, and, and I hate harping on illegal immigration, but you do understand this is the intentional demolition of the United States. And uh, there was a guy who gave the Marcus, Marxist Manifesto. And there was three things. It was a guy who put out the three things that you have to do to bring in Marxism or communism or socialism uh, on a nation. He says, number one, you have to destroy the currency. Well, they're doing that by leaps and bounds. <laughs> Speaking of currency, I mean, I don't know if you knew the, um, the uh, foreign ministers from, you know, the, the BRIC states. Uh, California, I mean, uh, South Africa, sorry, the dog, <laughs> he had me all wrapped up there trying to make the video and walk the dog at the same time. It's not an easy thing to do. Uh, anyway, you know, uh, you've got South Africa, uh, uh, India, um, you know, you know the BRICS nations, Russia, China, 
and uh, uh, South Africa. There you go. I can't believe my memory's that good. Well, the, the foreign ministers are meeting there right now. Oh man, I'm getting wet. Well, it's just barely bristling. And uh, so they're actually laying the groundwork for the upcoming October summit. Well, I think there's going to be a big announcement in, in uh, October. And if they really uh, do uh, establish some sort of alternative currency system or uh, payment system, that's it for the dollar, baby. You're going to see hyperinflation. So the Marxist Democrats have accomplished the first goal. The dollar is a reserve currency will cease to exist. And that's the first step of Marxism. And I'm going to have to cut off right here <laughs> and get the umbrella up. All right, we'll, we'll continue the video here in a minute. All right, so uh, anyway, there's the, so the Marxists have destroyed the dollar. I don't see it continuing to exist. So they've destroyed the currency. Now, the, there was another guy on. He was on uh, Stephen Gardner. Uh, by the way, that's another YouTube channel. I watch him, and he does a real good job. He's got like a million followers or something like that. Uh, and he makes like two videos a day. I don't know how he does it. To, but when you just sit behind a desk, <laughs> you, don't have to, you don't have to grab the dog and prepare everything, get out and make a hiking video. Uh, I guess it's a lot easier. And then go home and edit it. I don't think there's much editing on his videos because he mainly does interviews. I, I digress. Um, but anyway, the, the second point was the, um, the deculturalization of the, uh, of the society. In other words, uh, you, the sense of nationalism you have to destroy. Well, they've imported three, 30 million people that, didn't, that don't give a crap about the United States. Uh, I'm going to clean these cameras just a little bit here. A little drop of water on there. I hope I that wasn't affecting the video. And uh, so they've, they've deculturalized the United States. Not only, I mean, you know, they, they already had half the population that are atheist, woke, uh, Democrat, uh, meat puppet lunatics, you know. So uh, you already had half the population. Now you've added 30 million illegal immigrants. And uh, as, as um, Elon Musk pointed out, and I'll read that tweet to you later, that you know, if uh, if and when they grant them uh, citizenship to vote, the the, de the Democrats, it's a one-party system at that point. Of course, we are pretty much, we got the uniparty, but uh, at least with the MAGA movement, we have a chance to turn things around. Uh, about, you know, almost half of the Republican Party now is, has gone MAGA, and I think we're winning. You know, when you got Romney and Dick Cheney and uh, the Bushes and the McCains all uh, uh, endorsing Kamala Harris... Uh, you know, that means that uh, they know that the, the, the MAGA movement is winning because that means they, they're no longer, they're, they're already saying they're Democrats. They're saying that they're no longer Republicans. So we've gotten rid of, I mean, think about all the rhinos we just got rid of. I mean, that's incredible. I, I, well, yeah, and I made a joke. Uh, <laughs> I mean, and by the way, I'm, I'm surprised I'm not getting any, uh, somebody give me a thumbs up on this on X, man. I said, you know, because people were saying they're eating cats. I said, well, at least they're not eating people. <laughs> you know, I said, they're not resorting to cannibalism, the Haitians up in Ohio. You know, I, thought, I, thought, I don't know. I guess I got a warped sense of humor. I thought that was pretty funny. So, uh, yeah, we talked about the 9-11. The uh, let's see. Sorry, my notes got wet. I can hardly read them. Oh, yeah. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out on 9-11 was... Uh, they're talking about the Israeli involvement. Uh, we know that it was a controlled demolition of those buildings, or so I, th I think, as a demolitions expert. I mean, they came straight down, and then you had the third building that no plane even hit, and it went down. So don't tell me. I, I think that was a, a contrived event. Can you imagine the evil uh, of, the, of the Bush administration if they were involved and the Israelis to kill 3,000 people just to just to, you know, get us into the Iraq war and everything else. I mean, that's unbelievable. Uh, oh, yeah, here's the next story. Uh, I don't know if you've been following along, but there was a massive um, UAV strike in the Moscow region. Uh, now, Moscow, or the Russians are pointing out that, the, uh, that they shot down most of the drones. Uh, but there's, I got a... a a video of uh, uh, they actually were there were some apartment buildings hit. Let's watch that video now. I woke up at four o'clock and turned towards the window and saw something like fire, and that's it. Then there was the blast wave, and all the windows were blown out. I covered my wife with myself. Everything flew out. 
If the fragments had come any closer, they wouldn't have been able to save her. My legs are cut and my back is injured. Well, the Ukrainian uh, drones attacked the southeast of uh, the Moscow region around uh, 4 o'clock uh, in the morning. As a result, a 46-year-old woman was uh, killed. Uh, three people were wounded and at least uh, 43 people uh, were displaced. They're now being uh, helped at the temporary uh, refugee centers. Right now, I'm standing right next to uh, a building which was attacked uh, early in the morning. You can see it's a uh, uh, multi-apartment uh, uh, complex, uh, uh, at least. 54 apartments there have been damaged and this is where uh, a woman was killed. There are 102 apartments uh, there uh, in total. You can see this is a purely residential area right now. Um, uh, special services are working uh, on the scene, uh, collecting the uh, fragments of drones and everything else that happened. Uh, now, the area, once again, is cordoned off. Only people that live here are allowed to pass through, but that is also um, uh, limited. Now, this is not the only place uh, that was uh, targeted uh, here in uh, Ramen Square. Uh, another uh, apartment building was also uh, damaged. Now, as a result, uh, at least uh, three local airports uh, have uh, been closed. All flights were diverted, but at this point, the airports have uh, once again uh, been opened. Now, um, according to the defense ministry there were at least 20 drones that were uh, destroyed by the uh, russian forces in the moscow region but elsewhere in russia um, there were also attacks and according to the defense ministry uh, 144 drones have been destroyed all right so that's uh that's the first video uh and i wanted to show you that and then uh this is a cool video i, I thought this was Putin, and uh, you know what he's talking about, the Ukrainians, and, and I say the same thing about the Democrats. <laughs> so I guess I, I must be a Putin lover, man, because I'm actually agreeing with Putin. He, uh, This is a video of him talking about that the, the Ukrainians uh, must be possessed by aliens or uh, have some sort of woke virus. You know, he didn't put it that way. That's how I put it for the Democrats. Uh, let's watch him talk about Ukraine and why they want to continue to die in ever greater numbers and they're recruiting kids and i'm just going to put these back to back and then i actually have a recruitment video of uh, and there's there's many 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 of these where they're forcing people into cars and at this point from what i understand they only get two weeks of of training and then they're sent to the front lines to die and uh, we'll continue more of that let's watch that video и мне иногда сказали сказать впечатление что те кто руководят украиной как будто они вообще инопланетяне какие-то либо иностранцы ну собственно говоря не, не, не думают просто нет я серьезно говорю вы понимаете ну такие потери колоссальные чего они дальше будут делать я даже не понимаю нужно сейчас опять понижать понижать призывной возраст там чтобы детей набирать как в германии фашисты гитлер юган создавать но это не решит проблему следующий шаг это студентов призывать сейчас и так далее полностью обескроют страну. Повторяю еще раз, такое впечатление, что это не их народ. Но, собственно говоря, понятно, родственники членов правящей элиты в основном за границей проживают, сели на самолете, и нету их дела с концом. Они о стране-то не очень думают. Это прикрываются только националистическими лозунгами. Вот и все. Людей дурачат. Они глаза ему. Отпускайте! Отпустите сейчас же! Отпустите! Вызывай полицию! Полицию вызывайте! Не имеют! Отпускайте его! Я все сняла! Не переживайте! Суки твари! Так а что мы отдали его? А как мы его отдали? Мы он сам... Сами, сами по 100 килограмм! Alright, so that was that video. Now, the other thing I wanted to add is the... Uh, now, you, you can understand, somebody who's pulled off the street, thrown in a car, given two weeks of training and sent to the front lines, and then they get up there and the drones are flying overhead, artillery bombs are exploding all around you, you're being shot at, bombed by planes. Well, the desertion rate <laughs> is quite high. The number that they gave was 19,000 so far. 
but the commanders are reporting back and it's actually coming out in the news now they're saying man we can't i mean everybody coming to the front lines as soon as they get back you know because they they have to rotate them just a little bit uh they desert they won't go back and fight uh and so what are you going to do so that, then they offered well at first they were shooting the deserters like they did in world war one or or punishing them i'm not sure if they were throwing them and some of them went to prison but then they realized there's way too many. <laughs> so now they're saying, look, man, if you just will go back to the front line, we'll forgive you for deserting. You know, if, if, if you reconsider. I mean, and then, uh, of course, as you saw, Putin was pointing out that they're ever younger. Uh, let's get to the next one. Oh, this is a terrible thing. I tell you what. Uh, now, I, I don't know. Are evil people just ugly? Or do I just think they're ugly? I mean, when you look at Nancy Pelosi... I mean, is she ugly or what, man? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm not trying to be insulting, but, you know, a spade is a spade, right? I mean, when I look at her, and then you, you look at George Soros. I mean, that's Palatine himself. Hell, I don't even think Chuck Schumer looks, I mean, he looks kind of weird, doesn't he? Don't you think he's got that real uh, um, Adam's family look to him? You know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's Chuck Schumer. Let's see, Adam Shift, Shifty Shift. Doesn't he look like an evil little weasel? You know, and then look at Fachi. I mean, come on, that, does that little evil bastard not look like a, an evil little bastard to you? I mean, he kind of got that that grandpa, you know, that grandpa that, were, that, you know, you know, did a lot of evil things in his life look to him. I, I, I guess it's just me. I don't know. But this is a video that I that's on Victoria Newland, and she's admitting that she sa helped sabotage the peace deal. We could have saved a million Ukrainian lives, and she's laughing about it. Look at the smirk on her face in this video as she's talking about the fact that, you know, well, we, didn't, we wanted them to continue the fight, and we're happy about it. We killed a million Ukrainians, uh, and probably, you know, how, God knows how many Russians, maybe 100,000 Russians, 50,000 Russians, and she's all happy about killing that many people. These people are pure evil, man. Let's watch that video. There was a story first told by former Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett that that both sides were really close to the end, to the to the successful end of the, of the negotiations, and then Prime Minister Boris Johnson interfered and stopped uh, Ukrainians, prevented Ukrainians from from signing signing the deal, and then uh, Ukrainian representative Arahami kind of confirmed it that. Yes, he said in, a, in an interview that, that there was some kind of advice from Boris Johnson to, uh, to stop ne negotiating and to win this war militarily. Where is the myth? Where, where is the truth? Relatively late in the game, um, the Ukrainians began asking for advice uh, on where this thing was going. And it became clear to us, uh, clear to the Brits, clear to others, that Putin's main condition was buried in an annex uh, to this document that they were working on. Mm -hmm. And it included limits on the precise kinds of weapon systems that Ukraine could have after the deal, such that Ukraine would basically be neutered as a military force. And there were no similar constraints on Russia. Russia wasn't required to pull back. Russia wasn't, wasn't required to have a buffer zone from the Ukrainian border, wasn't required to have the same constraints on its military facing Ukraine. Um, and so uh, people inside Ukraine and people outside Ukraine started asking questions about whether this was a good deal, and that was at that point that it, that it fell apart. Was that insane or what? I mean, come on. Is she one ugly? I mean, she looks like something out of Star Wars, like Jabba the Hutt, doesn't she? I mean, I mean, I, 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 think about it. I mean, wouldn't that be like a female Jabba the Hutt? With, you know, if you, if you just fattened her up a little bit and put some green on her skin, I mean, I don't know, man. That's kind of how I look at it. All right, so uh, here's a story you didn't hear anything about. Israel bombed Syria. Uh, and... Uh, they killed like uh, 40 people, uh, and I got a video on that. Let's watch that video. 
Turbulent night for Syria. Several people have been killed and more than a dozen injured in what allegedly were Israeli strikes on multiple locations in central Syria, including the port of Tartus, home to Russian naval base. The death toll continues rising. We hear that some of those wounded are currently in critical condition. Reports suggest that more than 10 targets have been hit, including a research center that Israel believes is used by Iran. Iranian forces to manufacture surface-to-surface -surface missiles. Israel, by the way, hasn't claimed responsibility for the attacks, which is a rather common practice when it comes to strikes on Syria or Iran. The IDF says it refuses to comment reports in foreign press. Meanwhile, Syrian state agency Sana reports that the country's air defenses confronted an aggression overnight. Apart from human casualties, the strikes have damaged a highway in the center Central Hama province and also sparked a number of fires that multiple teams have been battling to control early Monday. Just hours before the attacks happened, Israel's defense minister met with the commander general of U.S. CENTCOM, reiterating that Israeli and American troops are committed to work closely together. And also earlier, Netanyahu has repeatedly vowed that Iran-sponsored groups, particularly Hezbollah, will be eradicated no matter what, despite some concerns from the Israeli military circle that Israel is not quite ready for a bigger war right now. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has indicated many times before that he would not take part in a war of Hezbollah against Israel if it ends up erupting. Syria is busy now recovering from a decade-long civil war. In recent months, we see efforts by various Arab and Muslim states to forge a united front against Israel. Only last week, Turkish President Erdogan met with the leader of Egypt, Sisi, after the two haven't met for years, by the way, to discuss regional developments. And they condemned Israel and agreed on working towards the resolution of the conflict together, with Erdogan also suggesting to form a Muslim alliance that would combat Israel. Israel already declared that they will not be satisfied with occupying Gaza alone. All Islamic countries should also take a common stance against the Israeli occupation, where it is uncertain when it will cease. We say that the only step that will stop Israel's arrogance, Israeli banditry and Israel's state terror is the alliance of Islamic countries. Now, it's hard to say if it's going to work, but while governments might be reluctant, I have to say that the Arab street is more than willing to engage in a battle against Israel. On Sunday, just on Sunday, we saw how a Jordanian national killed three Israelis at the Ellen Bay checkpoint, probably as a response to the war in Gaza. And we also saw how hundreds of Jordanians have celebrated this killing, taken to the streets with anti-Israeli slogans. And similar images are also seen in many parts of the Arab and Muslim world that has been protesting against Israel's deadly and devastating war in Gaza. And some now say it is only a matter of time until this already delicate situation becomes even more fragile and more dangerous. All right, so that was the all about the bombing in Syria. And you know what? I can't find it. You don't wonder why I go to RT and Al Jazeera to get the stories because I can't even find them a lot of times on YouTube. Everything on YouTube at this point is about that dumbass debate that I'm not even going to watch. Who wants to watch a cackling idiot debate, you know, Donald Trump? Donald Trump, I hate to say it, he's like a parrot. He's just going to repeat the same old things that you hear at the rallies over and over again. Every now and then he's, well, he is putting out policies now that are different. I mean, I do give him credit. You know, he's put, putting out a lot of good stuff. Uh, and, and Stephen Gardner talks about, you know, the, the, the things that he says he's going to do, I don't see how he's going to do it. He's going to go up against the deep state. While, hey, while we're talking about that, I just wanted to tell you about uh, the, uh, and this is Stephen Gardner. I got to give him credit. He had a guest on. If you want to go back about two videos, and the guy was talking about the October surprise and what that might encompass, because uh, we, we're all expecting an October surprise. And uh, he was pointing out that all of these fighting age men from China, uh, and then from uh, Mexico, from Venezuela, of course we got the Venezuelan gangs. I'm not talking about the gangs, I'm talking about uh, the um, people that have been recruited by the globalists. Um, he said, you know, there's a good possibility they're just waiting to be activated. 
And when they're activated, think of the chaos. I mean, these are trained soldiers and, they, and probably are armed by this point, you know, because I'm sure that the Democrats are giving them weapons, which, by the way, that's the second, the third, one of the, one of the things in the Marxist agenda to destroy the United States from within. And think of the damage they could do. They could blow up the uh, transformers across the country, the power stations. They could, uh, how they could attack the nuclear power plants, but they're pretty well uh, secure. Uh, they, they could poison our water. Think how easy it would be to poison the water. Just take, take a bunch of fentanyl and dump it into a river that, where they, with the extraction down the, down the way for a city. I mean, you could, you could literally kill a whole city unless they've got ability to detect the fentanyl in the water. I mean, I'm not trying to give them ideas. <laughs> I mean, I'm, just, I'm just telling you, you know, we've got thousands upon thousands of, 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 of sleeper cells in the United States. He was pointing this out. So if they did that in October, think about what the Democrats could do with the Biden administration. They could declare martial law and say, you know what? The entire nation has gone up in smoke and uh, we're activating the military. We're declaring martial law. And oh, by the way, there won't be an election. Uh, so... Uh, you know, there were other examples they gave of an October surprise, and I do think it's coming. Uh, I'm going to sit down here, and we're, we're going to make the rest of the video right here. Rather, That's just too damn difficult trying to walk the dog <laughs> and, and make the video at the same time. Uh, see, the next thing on here, Israel bombs. Oh, yeah, the uh, Jordan. There was a guy who got, got across the border uh, there in, the, in a secure area. And he killed uh, three Israelis, and then they, the Israelis shot the gunman. And I found a real good video on Al Jazeera. There was also one on RT. I might put them back to back, but I like the one on Al Jazeera better. Let's watch those videos now. So we start with this breaking news. There's been a shooting at a border crossing between the occupied West Bank and Jordan. Medical sources say at least three people were killed and that they were Israeli nationals. Israeli media say the attacker was also killed. This is a rapidly developing story. Let's get more from Al Jazeera's Nida Ibrahim. Uh, Nida, you're in Nablus right now in the occupied West Bank. So give us the basics as you know them. What happened, where did it happen, and who's involved? Well well, the latest we got is from the Israeli army. They say that the perpetrator managed to get inside uh, the crossing from Jordan. He had a gun. He shot towards a number of people, according to the Israeli army, who were providing security and trying to make the crossing secure. Now. This is a highly militarized area, considered really filled. Every bit of it is censored, cameras, security, checkpoints, you name it. So it's considered a very big security breach, an incident that rarely happens inside there. And according to the Israeli forces, they say that they killed the perpetrator who managed to get in from the Jordanian side via the cargo terminal. He was in a truck. He went down and he shot those three men dead and left others injured. This crossing called Al Karama Bridge for Palestinians is their only entry and exit from uh, the occupied West Bank to Jordan. Remember, Palestinians do not have an airport and the only way they can travel abroad is via this crossing in Jordan. After the attack happened, the Israeli forces have closed the bridge down, leading many people to mostly Palestinians to be stuck inside the bridge itself, uh, not being able to travel back and forth. We also know that the Israeli forces are now erecting checkpoints all around Jericho, which is very close, the closest town where Palestinians travel from there to the uh, uh, to Jordan. Again, three checkpoints against uh, that face Palestinians when they are trying to travel. The Palestinian one, and then the Israeli one, and then the Jordanian one highly militarized. This is still a developing story, as uh, you said there, Cyril. But again, we have to emphasize that this is a high security breach that uh, really will, will have a lot of ramifications. All right, so that's all about the three uh, people that got killed in Israel. You, you see why I show these videos? Because they do a lot better of describing the whole situation and how, how did this guy break in? I mean, it's kind of like October 7th all over again. How the hell did the guy get in there? I don't know. So, uh, this is, uh, okay, Ralph Nader was just on Judge uh, Napolitano, 
And uh, I don't know if you know Ralph Nader. He ran for president. I voted for him. I hate to age myself. <laughs> I mean, was, that was way back. Good, good God, how long ago was it when Ralph Nader ran for? I don't even know when it was. Uh, but anyway, um, he uh, uh, he got on Judge Napolitano, and he's throwing out some numbers. And I, I and I found some more evidence to back it up. But right now, uh, the um, the extermination, the uh, Biden, the Democrat. And the Israeli extermination of the Palestinians is a lot further along than we thought. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just shocked that the Democrats want to commit genocide, but that's, I guess, they're pretty evil people, huh? And uh, he, the numbers that he threw out were um, 300 to 400,000 dead right now. And he said, of course, with the starvation, uh, the disease, no hospitals, you know, people, they don't have access to medicine that, because the Israelis are blocking all of that. The continued bombing, uh, we could see at least 700,000 to a million dead uh, Palestinians by the end of the year, uh, according to Ralph Nader. I tend to agree, uh, for sure. I'm just surprised that the American people are going along with this genocide, and, and especially the Democrats for supporting the, uh, the, the Democrat Party uh, to kill all the, to, uh, to exterminate the Palestinians. But I found a good video, uh, uh, I shouldn't say I found, it was a post on uh, X, I just stumbled across it. You remember back when Rwanda, the uh, genocide, because we've seen this many times in history, there was the genocide in Cambodia, the world did nothing about, and then there was the genocide in, uh, in Rwanda, and let's watch a video on that, that genocide right now. Reason to believe that acts of genocide have occurred. How many acts of genocide does it take to make genocide? Um, Alan, that's just not a question that I'm in a position to answer. It's true that, the, that you have specific guidance not to use the word genocide in isolation, but always to preface it with this, uh, with this word axel. Um, I have guidance which, um, which, to which I, uh, which I try to use as best as I can. Um, I'm not, uh, I, I have, uh, there are, are formulations that we are using that we are trying to be consistent in our use of. Okay, so that was the genocide in Rwanda. I can't remember. I mean, there's been, a, a just in my lifetime, God knows how many genocides have taken place. Of course, the latest one is in Gaza right now. And the world just turns a blind eye. You know, if we wanted to end that genocide, all we'd have to do is stop sending bombs. Uh, Turkey. Turkey keeps, the Erdogan, Erdogan keeps giving it lip service. All he's got to do is cut the oil off. You understand he's supplying oil to Israel. If they weren't getting the oil, they couldn't uh, continue with the genocide. Just saying. I don't know. Uh, this is, and so also I wanted to add to that, that genocide video. This is a video. They just dropped a bomb on another. Uh, it's called the Al Maasi, M A W A S I, Al Maasi. It's a, 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 a Badovian town in the, off of the, on the southern coast of the Gaza Strip. Uh, they got killed 40 in an airstrike. Let's watch that video. All right, so that's the latest uh, 2,000 pound uh, Democrat bomb that we just dropped on uh, a bunch of civilians in uh, Gaza. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so we're going to get uh, into the, the, the reading portion of the video now. Sorry, I need my glasses for this one. <laughs> it was, it's so that the small print, but if I make it big, then I'll be constantly going back and forth. So let's, uh, let's get into this. God dang it, the sun just came up behind me. I tell you, I'm having a rough time making this video today. <laughs> Dog running around, rain on me. All right, this letter, I'm going to have to just scroll it back and forth. And the appendix shows 
uh, probative evidence that the human toll in Gaza is far higher than is understood in the United States. It is likely the death toll from this conflict is already greater than 92,000, an astonishing 4.2% of the Gaza population. Our government must act immediately. <laughs> They're Democrats, man. They're not going to act. I can't believe these people put this stupid shit in these letters. Our government must act immediately. The Democrats are going to listen to me writing this letter. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I, I don't know. I, I hate to make fun. At least they're doing the right thing, right? You know, to, uh, to prevent an even worse catastrophe than what has already befallen the people of Gaza and, and Israel. I agree. Israel's killing itself. A ceasefire must be imposed on both Israel and Palestine armed groups by withholding military support from Israel. He didn't put it in the letter, but I said also uh, Turkey withholding oil uh, from, from Israel and supporting an international arms embargo of both Israel and all Palestinian armed groups. We believe our government is obligated to do this both under American law and international humanitarian law, and that is the right thing to do. With only marginal exceptions, everyone in Gaza is sick, injured, or both. This includes every national, national aid worker, every institution, international volunteer, and probably every Israeli hostage, every woman and every child. While working in Gaza, we saw widespread malnutrition in our patients and our Palestinian healthcare colleagues. Every one of us lost weight rapidly in Gaza despite having privileged access to food and having taken our own supplementary nu nutrient-dense food with us. We have photographic evidence of light-threatening malnutrition in our patients, especially children, that we were eager to share with you. Virtually every child under the age of five whom we encountered, both inside and outside of the hospital, had both a cough and watery diarrhea. We found cases of jaundice, including hepatitis A infection, under such conditions. It is virtually every room of the hospitals that are left in which we served and many of our healthcare workers in Gaza. An astonishingly high percentage of our sur surgical uh, incisions became infected from the combination of malnutrition, impossible operating conditions, and lack of supplies and medications, including antibiotics. The pregnant women were treated, often gave birth to underweight infants. They were unable to breastfeed due to malnutrition. This left the newborns at high risk of death given the lack of access to potable water anywhere in Gaza. Many of those infants died. In Gaza, we watched mal malnourished new mothers feed their underweight newborns infants formulas with, uh, with uh, poisonous water. We can never forget the world abandoned innocent women, children, and babies. All right, so I, I got that. And then I want to read you the Elon Musk uh, tweet the publicly stated goal by almost all leaders of the Democrat Party is to legalize the 50, he says 15 million, it's really 30, Elon, you need to educate yourself, uh, migrants as soon as possible, as well as bring in tens of millions more. Yeah, they will, it'll be about 40 million by the end of the year. So uh, this would immediately make all swing states deep blue, just like happened in California, uh, turning America into a permanent one-party Democrat state, or Marxist state, I would say, or socialist state, the last real election if Trump loses. So that's right, everything's on the line in this election. I couldn't agree more. So I was just listening to the radio. <laughs> They're saying, we don't know what's going on. We don't know how these people came to Springfield. We, uh, i tell you how they came. Mayorkas, man. <laughs> that little, that little Troy. And treason. We got a treasonous government. They're, they're, they're destroying the, the Marxist Democrats. Are destroy. I mean, isn't it obvious to people at this point? I mean, I hate it when I listen to the radio and these people are going, we don't understand this. We, What's not to understand? What's not to understand? You know, it's intentional, man. We can't imagine how this could happen. It's happening because your government hates you, man. It's a bunch of Democrat lunatics running things in a deep state that's destroying the United States. It's a simple answer. We need, I hate to say it, we need a revolution. I mean, you know, and that's why I said the governor needs to send in the National Guard. I'm sorry, I got on my box here. 
All right, so I found a brief video. I'm making this real quick because I think I'm going to get wet again. Boy, I tell you, a tough time today. This is a brief video about, by John F. Kennedy on why he endorsed Trump and left the, the Demo well, you know, uh, his, his family now hates him. It's kind of like me. All my Democrat friends abandoned me back in 2000 when I, when I uh, was voting for Trump. So now he's, he's got the feeling of what it's like. Uh, so that's it. Let's watch that video. But, um, but when we ran three of us, my support went down to, you know, uh, double digits or, or single digits um, because people were voting out of fear. They were saying, oh, if I vote for Kennedy, then, you know, Trump's going to get elected. And if I vote for Kennedy, Biden's going to get elected. It's going to be the end of the republic. Um, but I was still getting enough votes that I was going to, uh, I was going to change the election results and I was going to get Kamala Harris. And I have a lot of fear about Kamala Harris being in the White House because I don't think that she's capable of standing up to the military industrial complex. And I think she, I also just don't think we should have a president of the United States that can't do an unscripted interview. That cannot yeah, talk to the press. It's, it's, and, uh, that's crazy. What do you think of the really CIA? All right, so we saw that. Um, this is, uh, I want to talk about Satan for just a second. Because you saw Victoria Nuland. You know she's evil. Fachi, he's evil. Soros, he's evil. Uh, Charles Schwab. There's another guy. I had to talk about ugly again, right? <laughs> Look at Charles Schwab. He looks like a character out of uh, Austin Powers, doesn't he? Uh, he the Mr. Evil. You know. All right. So, uh, but what I wanted to tell you is in the Bible, it says that Satan will reveal his plans. Okay, he has to before he enacts them. So, even though these evil, demonic, satanic people, you know, uh, they're always going to tell you what they're going to do before they do it. The thing is, is, there's a lot of people out there, the Christians especially, that they go like, nah, they didn't mean that. No way they would do something like that. That just sounds insane. No way they would nuke the entire world and destroy it. You know, I can't believe that they, they, they can't be that, that serious about destroying the planet. Well, they are. And they have to say it beforehand. So all you got to do, I mean, look at what Charles Schwab has said. He's giving you the World Economic Forum plan. Basically, he's going to rob you of everything you got. There's going to be no national borders. There's just going to be one global uh, blob. And you're going to be poor, own nothing, and, and be happy. Which I don't think you'll be happy. I, <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing that goes around the internet. So uh, we're going to finish off here. I found... This really cool video, boy, I tell you, it's getting dark. I know I, I'm going to get wet here now. Uh, but this, 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 this guy, he's on a motorcycle and he comes up. Now, the first time I watched the video, I was just more concentrated on the motorcycle because he survives. I hate to run the video for you. But the thing is, right in front of him, there's a truck. And, it, I, and I, I, had to watch it, well, I had to watch it to make the video. And on the second iteration, I went, oh, my God. Those people just died in that truck because the truck goes over. But anyway, it's a hell of a video. Peace out. Stay free. We'll make another video in a few days. I had to get this on the video. <laughs> it's like, why, Daddy? Why did you do this to me? I'm a drowned rat, man. I'm a drowned rat. <laughs>